All right, Karina Baby, today is September the 28th. We have Dot and Doors from A Year Full of Stories. It was September. Dot was gathering nuts and berries in the wood. As she scattered among the trees, she sniffed the air. Winter will be here soon, thought Dot. I must stir up lots of food. In a while, she met her friend Doris, lazing in the sun. You work too hard, said Doris. Come and sit with me. I've got to collect acorns and berries now, said Dot, or I will have nothing to eat in the winter. Oh, there's plenty of time for that, said Doris, dozing off again. The days went by, golden brown leaves fell from the trees, and soon the branches were bare. A cold wind blew through the woods, and autumn turned to winter. One frosty evening, Doris was very hungry. She ran along the hedge, the hedge groves, searching among the roots and brambles for something to eat, but there wasn't a nut or a berry to be found. Too late, too late, too late, hooted the owl. Meanwhile, Dot was snug in her hole. She was just going to sleep when she heard a tap, tap, tapping at the door. She got out of bed and opened it. Doris was on the doorstep looking very sorry for herself. I'm hungry, she said. I've been a very silly mouse. So Dot invited Doris in and gave her a good supper. Later that evening, Dot said, I have enough food for both of us. You can stay with me. Thank you, said Doris. You are a good friend. Then the two mice curled up and slept all winter. Oh, she was so good to her friend. She let her stay. All right, baby cakes. Let's see what's in for our next storybook. It is the shoemaker and the elves. There was once a shoemaker who thought no fault of his own, but had become so wait, there was once a shoemaker who through no fault of his own had become so poor that at last he had only enough leather for one last pair of shoes. That evening he cut out the shoes which he intended to begin upon the next morning. Since he had a good conscience, he lay down quietly, said his prayers, and fell asleep. In the morning, when he had prayed as usual and was preparing to sit down to work, he found that the pair of shoes standing finished on the table. He was amazed. He could not understand it in the least. He took the shoes in his hand to examine them more closely. They were so neatly sewn that not a stitch was out of place and were as good as the work of any master. Soon after, a purchaser came into the shop. He was very pleased with the shoes and paid more than the ordinary price for them so that the shoemaker was able to buy leather for two pairs with the money. He cut them out in the evening and the next day with fresh courage was about to go to work but he had no need to for when he got up the shoes were finished and buyers were not lacking these give these give him so much money that he was able to buy leather for four pairs of shoes early the next morning he found the four pairs of shoes finished and so it went on when he cut out the night before was finished in the morning so that he was soon again in comfortable circumstances and became a well-to-do man. Now it happened one evening, not long after Christmas, when he had cut out shoes as usual, that he said to his wife, How would it be if we were to sit up tonight to see who it is that comes in to lend us such a helping hand? The wife agreed. And so they lit a candle and hid themselves in the corner of the room behind the clods which were hanging there. At midnight came two little naked men. 
who sat down at the shoemaker's table, took up and cut out work. They began with their tiny fingers to stitch, sew, and hammer so neatly and quickly that the shoemaker could not believe his eyes. They did not stop till everything was quite finished and stood complete on the table. Then they ran swiftly away. The next day the wife said to the shoemaker, the little man have made us rich and we ought to show our gratitude. They run about with nothing on, and they must freeze with cold. Now I will make them shirts, coats, and vests, and will even knit them some thick stockings. And you shall make them each a pair of shoes, the husband agreed. And in the evening, when they had everything ready, they laid out the presents on the table and hid themselves to see how the little man would behave. At midnight they came skipping in and were about to set to work, but instead of the leather already cut out, they found the charming clothing. At first they were surprised, then excitingly delighted. With the greatest speed they put on and smoothed down the pretty clothes, singing, Now we're dressed so fine and neat, why cobble? more for others feet then they hopped and danced about and leaped look at them they're tiny little men right so cute and do you see them hiding behind the curtain there's the curtain over chairs and tables and out of the door from that time on the little man came back no more but the shoemaker feared Oh, but the shoemaker fared well as long as he lived and had good luck in all of his undertakings. Oh, so they helped until they were no longer needed. They had thick socks and, well, thick stockings and good shoes. Oh, they did so good. All right, Karina baby, let's do amazing grace. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. It was grace that taught my heart to fear and grace my fears relieved how precious was that grace thus far the hour i first believed through many days just snores and snares I have already come Tis grace that brought me safe thus far And grace will lead me home When we've been there ten thousand years Bright shining as the sun We've no less days to sing God's praise Than when we first begun How about some sing my little baby you know what i just miss you and i just love you and i can't wait to see you honey let's do lila tove and good night to you lila tove may your dreams come true we sing lila tove may israel protect you throughout the night until we reach the morning light. Green baby, I love you. Mama and Papa both love you. Like Papa used to always say, Mama's Papa's son, Papa's my moon. 
And you are quite literally our rainbow baby, and we both love you, honey. I miss you so incredibly much, and I can't wait to see you. I hope that you're having a great day, baby. I love you, Karina.